श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू दिसकेंड से ऑफ दिस वीक्स वीकेंड विथ विजडम विथ स्वामी स्वात्मा विद्यानंदा जी एंड शी इज एक्सपाउंडिंग ऑन द फिलोसफी ऑफ कैवल्य उपनिषद वीवर्स प्लीज पोस्ट युअर क्वेश्चन ऑन क्यू एंड ए बॉक्स एंड नॉट ऑन द चैट बॉक्स एंड स्वामी जी विल टेक अप दीज क्वेश्चन एट द एंड so without much further ado i request uh, swamini ji to start the session thank you om bhadram karne bhishraniyam devah bhadram pashye maksha bhairya jatra sthirai rangai istushtavagam sastano bih व्यशेम देवित यदायु स्वस्ति न इंद्र वृद्धश्रवा स्वस्ति न पूषा विश्व स्वस्ति नस्ताक्ष्यो अरिष्ट नेमि स्वस्ति नो बृहस्पतिर्दा ओ शाति 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 सहनावतु सहन भुनक् सह वीर करवाहै तेजस्वीतमस्तु मिद्विषा वही ओ शाति 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 कैबल्य means the only thing that exists and yes in the morning we saw you know and yesterday for some people depending on where you are logging from uh we saw that this that the only thing that is worth talking about worth knowing is what you the source of everything that is existence you know because you are a self conscious being a conscious being and this conscious being is you know conscious of oneself and conscious of everything else that is why you are unlike anything else in the universe and if you say you know oh what about this uh, you know what about other people you know the other people are also there so many other people you know they are all the same as me you know they are they may be the same as you but the thing is there is only one consciousness many bodies many different you know ways of you know eating drinking wearing clothes so many things what we see the differences outside the you know all these differences underlie a sacred truth which is the only thing in the world that is worth knowing and knowing which one is free finally of sorrow otherwise one is just a crying jeeva this is this is what the whole this is the gist of whatever we have talked about little more we have to see before we actually enter into the dialogue then uh, we will be seeing that uh, in this session so what does this uh, kaivalya do the kaivalya puts one in touch with that truth of oneself which is the only thing that there is which is the only thing that there is to know and what is that only thing that you are one kaivalya therefore means only one yeah only one and that only one is a, that only is a qualification for that one which is indivisible as we, we we can just take a trip to the chandogya upanishad which reiterates the same thing in a slightly different way ekam eva advitiyam sat eva idam agre asit before this whole variegated universe of names and forms and all kinds of complexes you know i am not good enough i am an idiot and why was i born and what's the why, why doesn't anybody love me all these complexes in the midst of all this before all these things came into being before means it's not the question of time 
it's just a question of you know that which existed before this universe came into being the universe is less of a creation more of a projection it is not a srishti according to the veda it is abhivyakti it is projected and then taken back resolved projected and resolved from that one source from that kevala kevala ishvara you know from that ishvara alone the whole thing is projected so it's not separate from ishvara what is projected is one with the projector and so before this projection came what was there kevala here it is called kevala in the kaivalya upanishad and when we motor down to what is that chandogya upanishad sixth chapter we have the word sat so what's the difference between sat and kevala no difference then why why are they confusing us why can't they just use why can't the upanishad use just one word so that we will understand this well because you know because you, you know people get uh, what is that the, the ahankara that is listening to this knowledge it plays tricks it gets bored it gets restless it goes off on a little you know manorajya manorajya means a little uh, trip down memory lane oh what will happen when i get enlightened one starts <laughs> fantasizing all kinds of things when while doing shravanam and so therefore the upanishad keeps you on your toes in one place it is called kaivalya kevala in another place it is called sat in the third place it is called madhu vidya brihadaranya upanishad and then uh, in another place it is called jyotir brahmana again in the brihadaranya upanishad and again in the further along in the seventh chapter of the chandogya upanishad this same kevala kaivalya is called as something else what is it called there bhuma bhuman <laughs> bhuma <laughs> so very interesting so the same thing same atma same brahman you know otherwise a for atma b for brahman we you know it's just only two things you talk about you know c for chit d for dharma <laughs> it we can go on only few things these vedantins talk about you know and then the mind the you know the the the, the mind actually wants to know but the ahankara comes in the way uh, been there done that atma 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 how much atma and you know brahman brahman and so therefore when you say when you hear the word kevala kaivalya it's new and so the person who who is a good sleeper where in vedanta class <laughs> you know <laughs> wait still sahana babatu opening mantra and then nods off sahana babatu is a lullaby and uh, purnamada the closing mantra is a suprabhatam for whom that person you know is uh, nodding off nodding off and then suddenly hears the word kevala oh i thought it was we were talking about atma but now it is kevala it is presented in a hundred different ways because it is infinite you are infinite so you, we can never get tired of talking about this and then you know for the people who have that same level of preparation that ashvalayana had when he approached his teacher you don't ever get ever 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 get tired of listening to it you know in other words you can never be vedantaad out you know <laughs> some people say i'm spaced out i'm uh, i'm i'm done with this i'm done with that you know this happened to me one time i was uh, i went to uh, some town where i go every time and uh, i went the next year and there was one lady in the previous times who was very active and who was you know uh, who had arranged everything she was close to the organizer every you know she was just very uh, up in, you know front and center of the whole organizing my talks and then i didn't see her so i was naturally con- you know concerned so then i said to the host where is this uh, so and so where is this person because i hope she's okay and the host said she's okay but she is swamied out because you see before you came there was swami so and so before that there was swami so and so and then so she worked for all these swamis and now she is swamied out you can be swamied out but you will never be vedantaad out if that 
you know if there is a tivra ichha a cultivated desire the if the uncultivated desire to be one with this kevala to be one with this oneness and to get rid of this sense of alienation between you know myself and the world and god what we call god ishvara if if that you know this uncultivated desire is given a free rein and expression if the you know if it is brought to the forefront then there is nothing boring about this because it's all about you it's like looking into the mirror and this is what is going to be the you know topic for today it is vedanta is not you know like any other pursuit this is the first thing we have to understand because every other pursuit in and vedanta there are some very basic but profound differences in every other pursuit in every other fulfillment of any desire the desirer is left intact in the fulfillment of the desire to know something like uh, botany biochemistry physics whatever it is the knower the pramata is left intact you are the subject and what you are studying is the object you know and and same thing you are the desirer you know and then uh, the you know then the object of desire you want to become one with you want to go and get it you want to become a karta then you become a bhokta we saw that karta bhokta karta bhokta you know but then you know this is in other pursuits but the pursuit of vedanta manages to lo- knock off the desirer manages to knock off the knower how this is a very important discussion because the, the you see the desirer is not the true self it is not you it is you plus a, you know a superimposed status that has just you know that has just uh, come on to you by association first it is by association i have desires is not a problem i we, we discussed that at length in the last session but that i am a desirer is a problem <laughs> why is i am a desirer a problem because there is an identification with myself and the desire desirer and uh, as the desirer between myself and the desire there is no space i become one with the desire and i am minting my new identity as the desirer this is a problem because there the desirer is always a sad and discontented person but how can you say that because it is very difficult to fulfill a desire <laughs> ask anybody who has tried to fulfill a desire you will see how difficult it is because there is many many a slip they say between the cup and the lip same thing here many 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 you know uh, things that keep you apart and those all those factors we talked about earlier in the session they are all karmic karma keeps you away from wanting so you know getting what you want and what you feel you deserve what you need all these things and so therefore what so therefore this concept that i have become one with the desirer is you know this desiring person is the same as me is a mistake it's a mistake which is the baby of atma agyanam atma agyanam another name you know atma agyanam means self ignorance another name for this self ignorance is what you know atma agyanam one more name is there it is called agrahanam agrahanam technical term you know agrahanam means not grasping the truth of myself not grasping i don't know you know i don't know agrahanam grahanam grasping agrahanam not grasping that i am kevala that i am sat that i am bhuma that i am madhu vidya that i am jyotir you know jyotihi jyotisham jyotihi not grasping that you know this is what you know that i am brahman not grasping that is a problem you know but not knowing that i am brahman does not create sorrow very interesting 
So Ajnanam doesn't create sorrow. Ajnanam doesn't, Ajnanam centered on the self, does neither create sorrow nor creates any problems. Why, like I said in the earlier session, we have, we have dogs, cats, all these things. They don't know I am God. They don't know I am Bhagavan. They don't know anything. And so, but still, they seem to be happy if they are left alone, you know. And even though people earnestly come and tell me, my dog is also listening to your online classes, Swamiji, you know, they, the dog listens because you are sitting there, okay. If you get up and go, the dog will also get up and go. The dog is not there for Vedanta. Vedanta is not meant for the dog. Vedanta is meant for the one dogged by all kinds of complexes centered on the self. So what's the difference between the pet dog and you? The pet dog is happy, you are not. Both of you have Atma Ajnanam, but the pet dog is better off in a way, you know. But unfortunately the pet dog doesn't have a chance in this life at time, at least as a dog, to shift its focus, to shift its, you know, uh, its condition and to become a knower of this under to to have this understanding but you have a chance because you are born in this body and you are you know you are free to to have this uh, you know you are free enough to have a complex centered on the self so ajna, atma ajnanam is common to both agrahanam is common to both but for the human being, they are twist to this Ajnana, almost like the Ajnanam had a baby and the brood of this Ajnanam is called Anyatha Grahanam. Anyatha Grahanam means not only do I not know myself, which I said is not a big problem, you know, but because if I don't know myself, I take, you know, it's, it's, I just go about my life. I'm in the laws of the Lord. I'm in the laws of the five elements. I just am who, whoever I am. But the problem comes if I take myself to be what I'm not. Deho hum, I am the body. You know, manaso hum, I am the mind. I'm as good as the body. You see, this is where the sorrow is. This, I'm as good as the body. I'm as good as the, the mind. And this is, this is what is the, 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 you know, in the traditional Shastra, an example is given of the rope and the snake. And so, you know, nobody gets scared of a rope. So if, let's say a rope is lying down there in the grass and you don't know it's a rope and you're just walking, going about your merry way then it doesn't become a topic of what? Fear. It doesn't become a subject matter of fear. When does it become a subject matter of fear? Huh? When you mistake it for a snake. This is what, <laughs> this is the, uh, you know, this is the thing here. And maybe the sages knew this a long time ago. That's why the mistake that is made, you know, upon one thing by superimposing another thing as the rope and the snake has got a name in Sanskrit, Aropa. You see, it's just like the word rope. Very nice. Aropa. So this Aropa creates problems. I am the body. So body dharma is put on the Atma. Mind dharma is put on the Atma. So I take, there are two mistakes here centered on the self. I take myself to be what I am not. Mistake number one. Like I'm not the body, but I say I am the body. I'm not just the mind. I, I say I am the mind, you know. And then I'm not the senses, but I conclude that I'm as good as my feelings. I'm as good as what I can see, etc., etc. And then, you know, and then what? I'm as good as the body. I'm as good as the mind. This is, you know, I take myself to be what I am not, one kind of aropa. And what is the other kind of aropa? It is logical. It, it is not easy. It's not very hard to figure out the other kind of aropa. The second kind of aropa is what? You know, I take myself, you know, to first is I take myself to be what I am not. And then second one is I don't accept who I really am. What I am, I reject. What I'm not, I, I, I take on. 
two mistakes centered on the self. These are the twin babies of Atma Ajnanam and the broods of Atma Ajnanam causes sorrow. This is what it is. Causes pain and Vedanta is the, and, you know, is the, is the, is the uh, remedy that removes the pain. Removes the pain, how? By removing the notion that you are as good as the desiring person. And that's how we have sentences in the Upanishads like the Taitariya Upanishad. Sarvan Kaman Samashnute Brahmana Saha So all the desires are, you know, completely eliminated with one swoop by the study of which knowledge, which Kevala, which Kaivalya, which Brahman, that is what is needing to be pursued. You know, such big statements, beautiful statements are made. And how are these statements made? I mean, you know, this because this is a master key. Every desire is, you know, is for the infinite alone, you as the infinite. I don't want to die. I told you this is a universal desire. I don't want to die. And then, I, I, and I don't want to die. I want to be forever. And that forever alone is what is, makes you happy. Because if you say, if you ask somebody, how long you want to be happy? You know, they will not say, please make me happy, oh Lord, for five minutes. <laughs> Nobody will say that. How long you want to be happy? Forever. And the, the, the problem is that this forever is transference. You know, there is transference with this forever. The, the, the concept of forever, which I have a vague idea about as the jiva, I put it on to all kinds of finite things and try to make the finite into the infinite repeatedly, life after life after life. And not only one person, not only one jiva, everybody else is doing it. And so you feel like there is justification, like everybody is doing it, so it is okay. <laughs> And then what? Misery loves company. So we will all be miserable together. This is what is called samsara. This is what the whole problem is. And that which eliminates it is what is called Upanishad Visharati. Removes it. And what Visharati? What Visharati? Anartha Vratan Visharati. It removes all kinds of unwanted. Anartha is Ashubha. Unwanted. Ashubhani Nirachashte. You know? And so this this anartha vratan, uh, you know, prahinoti, prahinoti means removes. Uh, vrata means a group, a host of all kinds of unwanted things, fear, sorrow, suspicion, you know, rejection, complexes centered on the self. Because this was the question asked earlier, Vedanta in daily life. Yes, this is all in daily life alone. And so the, all this it just removes without a trace and that is what is you know is called the Upanishad that the word Shad itself has these meanings Visharati removes Avasadayati destroys uproots and then what you know Brahma Gamayati it unites you with that oneness that one is seeking searching 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 so to go back to the topic for today, what we were discussing so far, what we have been discussing so far is that, you know, is that there is a difference between Vedanta and every other pursuit. When you pursue something like a job, a relationship, you know, a, a, a some kind of a, a pastime, a hobby, whatever it is that you pursue, earnestly with all your, you know, heart, you as an entity is still separate from the object of the pursuit. That's why there is a sense of incompleteness no matter how close you may be to whatever you pursue. There is a sense of want and incompleteness because there is a separation that subject-object separation. In other words, there is no Kevala, there is no Kaivalya in those pursuits. But when you pursue the truth of yourself, you know, when, when whatever you want, you know, instead of looking and moving with the finger here and pointing to things, you come back to yourself and you pursue this. There is, you know, there is a difference 
because it knocks off the knower it knocks off the desiring person you know it knocks off the wanting person it knocks off the struggling person trying to swim in the murky waters of samsara meera bai sings about it very beautifully our medieval saint and she says you know mori lagi lagana guru charanana ki i am just completely obsessed with the feet of the guru feet of the guru means knowledge feet of knowledge you know the foundation of the knowledge why jhoota maya sab sapanana ki everything else that i encounter is what just you know a, a, a just aropa it's just a transference it's just a putting you know uh, what is that it's just a superimposition jhoota maya sab sapanana ki mori lagi lagana guru charanana ki and then what you know i went to the guru she says to get some swimming lessons yeah, how to swim in samsara because there is the eels of doubt there is the seaweed of despair and then there is you know uh, what else you know riptides riptides of various kinds of things coming and attacking me under currents are there riptide is there and then uh, d- d- desires are there seaweed and despair is there all kinds of dangers are there fearful waves are there and i so thought let me go to the guru and see if i should do front stroke back stroke <laughs> butterfly stroke which is the best way to swim in samsara because who am i am a flotsam or a jetsam i'm being thrown about by the winds of misfortune and the waves of despair let let me go to the guru and ask for some help and then what did the guru do she says a miracle happened you know she said you know i just closed my eyes fell at the feet of the guru and when i opened the eyes bhava sagar sab sukh gaya hai fikr nahi mohe taranan ki i found that the ocean of samsara the guru's the warmth of the glance of the grace of the guru took away all the the ocean of samsara dried it up so what was left was there was no need to swim at all took away the need to just keep bobbing up and down in the mediocrity of the status quo that is what is the miracle of this knowledge and how did this how did this need to swim how was this taken away because the guru you know ulat bhai meri nayanan ki the the guru revolutionized my vision so that what i saw was different from what i saw later what i saw earlier was i was mired in the eclipse of the subjectivity of the fears and the tears and what i saw was just gloom doom despair and this ocean which full of crocodiles and eels and sharks and stingrays all these kinds of things you know inside the water the stingray will give you a shock yeah they are all 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 there this is the ocean uh, you know fauna and i was afraid of all of them and then i thought how to swim and not come under their spell then i thought then when the guru's teaching happened the guru's grace and the teaching of the guru made me see what made me see the truth that there was no ocean the guru reduced the ocean to but a notion <laughs> centered on the self i am afflicted that i am afflicted is a notion it's not the ocean of samsara and that knowledge by which the ocean itself is reduced to the notion how can we even put any other pursuit alongside this and that's why you you can never give me the excuse anymore i don't have time for vedanta <laughs> you see this is why because it's not like anything else because you know gaining this you gain everything else including a complete freedom of vision an objective vision where nothing and nobody in this universe is out to get you that's not an easy thing this is huge this is a very 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 big thing and so therefore this is the this is a very different kind of knowledge extremely different kind of knowledge 
and uh, you know not not the you know not not, not your usual uh, branches of knowledge or any other pursuit because in any other pursuit you know you don't you know it's like for example a professor of microbiology you know the professor of microbiology after teaching microbiology for 40 years does not turn into a microbe yeah <laughs> Suddenly he comes, he or she comes to the class, and then you cannot see them because they have become microscopic after they have become one with the branch of the knowledge they were studying. No, even after retirement, they'll be different from that knowledge. But this knowledge, you know, Brahmavit, Brahmaiva Bhavati, the knower of Brahman, Mundaka Upanishad says, is just Brahman alone. There is nothing other than that. Nothing other than that. You become one with this knowledge because you, as who you thought you were, is, is completely shifts, shifts that vision. Because the problem is not in who you are. Who you are is fine. Because if the problem is, you know, if the, the thought that I am subject to sorrow, if you are really subject to sorrow, then I tell you every morning you will be waking up with a wet pillow because you will be crying all night. But that never happens. In sleep, everybody is happy. In sleep, everybody is fine. In sleep, there is no desire. In sleep, there is no pain. In sleep, there is no sorrow. And then only when you wake up, it starts. And so the, what that means? What does that mean? There is some vyabhichara. Vyabhichara means there is a contradiction. This is our entry point. You know? Just through this example of sleep, this is our entry point. We can just immediately see that, oh, in sleep, I am one with the infinite, except I don't know it. I only know it in hindsight. Ah, that was a good sleep. But as soon as I wake up, there is a problem. Problems, as soon as I wake up and stretch, the problems also stretch with me. You know, they also wake up. I am having my coffee and they start complaining and I also start complaining. The shadow wakes up with the, you know, shining self. And very soon the shadow takes over and, you know, because of the Atma Ajnanam and the Agrahanam leading to the Anyatha Grahanam, the shadow takes over and the shadow calls the shots. This is why we need Vedanta. This is why we need to study the Upanishad. And so now with these words we can go into the text a little bit and see what it has to say. As I said, it starts with a very nice what is called Akhyayika. Akhyayika means there is a, uh, you know, a little story. Street, you know, Akhyayika, a baby story. And so the baby story is that this person called Ashvalayana and I said and I told you in the morning itself that the Upanishad is in the form of a dialogue because in our tradition the teaching of oneself as Ishvara is not a matter for belief it is not a matter for belief there is nothing to believe it is an equation that needs to be understood after repeated uh, inquiry, listening, mananam, mentation, contemplation, etc. if needed. But after repeated listening, it is something that needs to be, needs to be understood and incorporated, assimilated. You know, in other traditions, it's, you know, you, it's a matter of belief. Ishvara is a matter of belief. And they will say, you know, there is Ishvara. Oh, okay. And then what, you know? You have to say that, you know, you are saved. But how do I know I am saved? No, just you have to believe. You have to believe you are saved. And then you will be saved. For us, it is not like that. We don't have this concept of savior. In fact, during this, uh, you know, um, my guru, Swami Pujya Swamiji, uh, Dayananda Ji, you know, went and uh, had a, uh, you know, had a, this thing, uh, had a, had been invited to the Millennium U United Nations Summit. And there, you know, he was being interviewed. And suddenly some, some reporter stuck a microphone, you know, in front of him. Swamiji, what is your message for the new millennium? You know, this was 20 years ago. And what a beautiful 
you know time to be there and he said what a beautiful thing to witness he said I don't have a message I have a prayer yes what is your prayer Swamiji my prayer is oh Lord please save me from all saviors that was his prayer beautiful prayer because that is in keeping with our tradition there is no then you don't need to be saved you are already saved Mirabai was not saved by the Guru her vision was you know distorted and the vision was completely changed as a result of this knowledge you are already saved moksha is an as though pursuit you are already mukta you are free you are kevala you are bhuma you are brahman you are bhagavan how many um, in in so many ways i can put it you are already completely free and then what so therefore there is no need to be saved so the pursuit is therefore cognitive it is something to be understood it is it, it is something to be understood without a shadow of doubt without a shadow of vagueness or error so the knowledge is made free doubt free error free mistake free vagueness free and then you can enjoy this knowledge until then one does what is called Shravanam and this is what is so important this is why it is unlike any other branch of knowledge because here you know you it is what is that prasaktasya you know uh, pratishedhaha it is, it is it basically it is the gain of what is uh, it's an as though gain of what is already gained so it's as though gain it's not a real gain because this you are not away from what you seek the seeker is the sort and so therefore the Upanishad has to be in the form of the dialogue because it is not something that you swallow hook line and sinker you know and think of who is coming and sitting in front of the teacher for the Upanishad who is this prospective student the prospective student has been you know saved by the quote unquote saved by the guru from the hot frying in the hot oil of samsara and put on a plate okay yeah like gulab jamun and what does the guru do puts the puts this jiva who has just come out of the hot oil of samsara into a lovely sugar syrup fragrant with uh, with uh, with uh, what is that saffron and uh, mm, cardamom cardamom powder and saffron you know uh, flavored sugar syrup this jiva is put into to soak up the knowledge of the Upanishads and to get rid of the feeling I am all alone I am in the middle of samsara I am a samsari I am an idiot I am very very sorry but I am a samsari all these things have to go these notions have to go these notions have to be shunned and then that is that is the beauty of this knowledge and so therefore the, the Upanishad has to be in the form of a dialogue it is if, if because think of who is coming for the, the study the person with a lot of complexes and the ahankara with a lot of resistance because the ahankara is not going to go down quietly <laughs> the dog you can teach to you know to sit you can have a little biscuit in the hand and say sit it will sit after looking at the biscuit okay not because it is moved by your command <laughs> it will sit only for the biscuit it's also clever but the ahankara even if you give it a reward it will not sit because it is suspicious this is a jiva who is suspicious because the, the, the jiva has been disappointed life after life after life and has a, a sense of you know overarching suspicions about everybody and everything including the guru you know who are you how do I know you will give me what I want how do I know you know you know why do I need you and if it is a self-knowledge I should get it by myself why do I need you all this will be talking about but you know just this is just a little you know sketch of what is to come so the guru also here you know one is suspicious of one is suspicious of the book one is suspicious of the message of the book am I going to be converted into something am I going to be taken over and more often than not the ahankara likes its little complexes even though it's miserable it clings on to the notion I am the pramata because some little happiness it gets I suppose the ahankara means ego you know 
it clings on to the notion i am incomplete i am an idiot why because you know it can it can use this to manipulate other people it can use this information or this misinformation rather to help you know what is that you know get whatever it wants it can turn on the waterworks and cry and feel itself a victim it can it can then become aggressive and feel itself you know as as someone who is you know unleashing all kinds of terrors so this ahankara you know it's if you it has to be dragged kicking and screaming to the upanishad really it's not going to sit and take this very nicely and so if if the upanishad was a monologue not a dialogue you know you are a Brahm, you are a brahman and if 18 chapters of bhagavad gita did not have a single question by arjuna nobody would be interested nobody would come <laughs> In fact, sometimes we love Arjuna more than Lord Krishna because we identify with him. He's just like us. I mean, he he also wonders, you know, sthita pragna sya ka bhasha. How does the person of knowledge sit? How does the person of knowledge eat and drink? And how can I recognize this person? He has similar questions to us. They are similar to us. If knowledge is the goal, then why do I have to do karma? you know the he asked these kinds of questions we love him we love these questions because these questions actually you know become the impetus for the next chapter and we don't want the teaching to end really otherwise the bhagavad gita would have finished in two chapters i tell you you know brahma vidya was given this knowledge of the self was given yoga shastra karma yoga how to lead a life conducive to gaining this knowledge was also given what more is left but he had a question in the beginning of chapter 3 which gave birth to chapter 3 so therefore we love this back and forth because you know you are an agent here you as i told you you have been a, you are a conscient a conscious agent here in the sense of seeking the knowledge all this time you have been an agent karta 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 and the ahankara if it's told to drop the kartit kartritvam the do worship immediately it's going to rebel so the guru has to find some other ways the guru has to first you know say okay come let's have a chat about the atma you know talk to me what do you want to know when the student asks the question but even so it's a dialogue it's a special dialogue called samvada it's a special dialogue it's not an ordinary dialogue between friends you know like shall we go to this movie no 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 forget movie let's go to dinner you know this is called vada some vada means i look up to the person as a teacher i look up to what they have to say so i'm not going to contest what they say i take it with a what is that called you know i take it with a grain of salt uh, I, i you know i may have my suspicions but i give them the benefit of doubt i give them the benefit of doubt and i tell them you know what you know uh, you might you know you might have you might have been completely uh you might be completely right and let me let me look at it let me give this a benefit of doubt and see how to how to go about this this is what the whole thing is and so therefore this uh, what's his name you know this ashvalayana you know the, the, the is the student here and uh, brahma ji lord brahma is the teacher so this is what is called samvada respectful listening with a view to gaining the knowledge rather than contesting the teacher's knowledge or competing with the teacher or basically disrespecting the teacher or contradicting the teacher that is not the idea the idea is to gain the knowledge so i come from a place of i don't know and i want to know so this is the kind of a special dialogue that is there in the uh in the in the upanishad every upanishad has this kind of a dialogue sometimes we know the names of the teachers like in this upanishad we know both the teacher's name lord brahma and then we know the student's name who is the student ashvalayana 
and i told you in the earlier class that you know you just don't have a teacher dragged off the street some person who you don't know because the knowledge then there won't be any shraddha more of the more on that later on there won't be any shraddha there won't be any kind of a respect or a devotional you know trust regarding this knowledge and so therefore what so therefore it has to be an exalted student teacher you find in all the upanishads who is the teacher sanat kumara one of the sages sitting at the feet of lord dakshinamurti in the 7th chapter of chandogya is the teacher Uddhalaka, another very learned person, is the teacher in the sixth chapter. So we, the names Pippalada is the teacher in the Prashna Upanishad, very highly evolved sage, highly regarded, highly evolved sage. And so all these are, you know, uh, the this is an exalted teacher because when you see that the exalted teacher is teaching, well known in the Upanishads, in the Puranas, etc., there is a desire to. study okay this you know a local teacher might mislead me but this teacher who is what alaukika loka and <laughs> local and alaukika this alaukika means what out of this world literally you know alaukika teacher uh, you know teaching apaurusheya knowledge a knowledge that is not human made man made woman made it is as i told you seen by the seers of the mantra and then so therefore you know it's a very holy knowledge sacred knowledge and is all to foster the trust in the ahankara and so that the ahankara will say ha ah, brahma ji is teaching okay i'll come and sit you know but a local teacher called brahma i'm not interested in i want that real brahma ji to come and teach but again if the student is some roadside fellow you know just sitting in front of the teacher again nobody is interested it doesn't make news it is not a uh, study worthy because somebody got it some you know some fellow got it some roadside riffraff got it who cares that's why we have exalted students exalted teachers exalted students the student in the 7th chapter of the chandogya upanishad is none other than narada narada who knows everything narada who knows grammar narada who knows shiksha pronunciation kalpa you know how to do rituals vyakarana grammar and then what else you know nirukta nirukta is you know all the synonyms and all these things he knows all the grammar he knows the synonyms he knows the know how of doing rituals he knows the vedas he knows astrology he knows astronomy and he knows you know dhanur vidya shastra vidya nakshatra vidya ayurveda he knows all the upavedas he knows the six angas the six branches of the vedas which we just talked about and he knows the upavedas you know art of warfare art of you know uh, so, fortune telling with the help of the stars astronomy slash astrology in those days he knows you know ayurveda he knows uh, archery he knows everything but he says soham bhagavah shochami shokasya param tarayatu bhavan please all revere teacher oh lord he tells uh, sanat kumara i know all this but i still grieve i'm subject to grief even though i know so much sanat kumara laughs oh why are you laughing i'm laughing because what you know is nothing you just happen to know a lot of nothing <laughs> how much is a lot of nothing <laughs> nothing <laughs> a little bit of nothing still nothing <laughs> this is the this is the this is the beauty of this you know so you have exalted teachers featuring in the upanishad starring in the upanishad you have exalted teachers and then you have exalted students and this is the, this is the beauty of the upanishad because there is a srotra buddhi prarochanartham this is all made to wet the appetite of the future shrotas shrotas means the listeners like you know like the all of you listening now then you say oh then if the teacher called brahma ji is so exalted who is this ashvalayana i have not heard of him let me tell you ashvalayana is not an ordinary person rigveda acharya he had a uh, vedic school uh, patashala he was teaching it is elsewhere mentioned 
and besides he is also the author of very important sutras you know in addition to following a particular veda i told you the veda was given to uh, families to you know uh, foster and keep you one also naturally belongs or follows a particular sutra and these these are four in number based on the sages who wrote them so sutras sutras are basically sutra means you know, little aphorisms but here aphorisms but here sutra means a particular interpretation of how a ritual should be done you see you go to indian households and then you know in some households let's say just now this mahalakshmi festival just went uh, went by on uh, on friday we had this vara mahalakshmi which is an annual festival but then you know people uh, in certain parts of india perform certain rituals on that day and in other parts of india they perform some other rituals and so then if you see why you do you do this in your house differently oh we are apastambha sutra followers apastambha is a very common sutra follower followership it has a great followership in uh, what is that you know in uh, in south india and that is uh, so that that was uh, you know uh, this is these grihya sutras are there so many people you know so many sages are there baudhayana gobhila apastambha and then ashvalayana you know all these are people who who wrote the subtle uh, differences and interp- of interpretations of how should the you know how should the how the, should the vedic religion the vedic tradition be expressed in day to day life that's why the same thing navaratri is followed so many different ways some people say oh we should fast without even taking water nirjala and some people say no 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 we can have water we can even have one time meal because this is what we do in our family this is what the whole thing ashvalayana is the author of ashvalayana sutras in olden days they didn't have twitter so therefore you followed a sage which was very nice <laughs> this was a very very uh, you know beautiful thing to do now we just follow you know people on twitter some celebrity and all what a waste what a huge waste of time you know so this is ashvalayana who is what a household name everybody knows or we can take it as some other ashvalayana it doesn't matter but it's a familiar name and so therefore it is uh, interesting that this is the name that is chosen and he is the student of the upanishad and the, the 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 student of the upanishad you know ashvalayana you know approaches the teacher why does he approaches the teacher you know why does first of all because even though he is so exalted even though he is the author of the ashvalayana sutras like narada he he might still be subject to grief subject to self dissatisfaction and you see if grief fear dissatisfaction are real if they are sat they cannot be removed they cannot be removed that which is real cannot be removed oh then it should be maybe it is unreal if it is unreal then you need not remove it then what is the problem here it's it's in between real and unreal so asad asad bhyam anirvachya it is experienced so i cannot dismiss it but then it is not there all the time so i cannot affirm it this is the problem with samsara it can neither be affirmed nor be dismissed this is the problem with everything that you see in the whole jagat everything that you interact with everything that you objectify is neither here nor there this is why the sorrow has to be addressed so you're not trying to remove the sorrow you know what are you trying to remove atma agyanam and like i said you may know the whole all the branches of knowledge if you don't know this it is the greatest the, the loss of the absolute is an absolute loss the loss of the infinite is an infinite loss which leads you if you lose the infinite if you miss the absolute then what happens is that you are always absolute you know you are seeking infinitely you become an infinite seeker instead of the seeker of the infinite we saw that in the earlier class 
very important distinction, slight subtle distinction, but very important to keep this in mind. So better to be a seeker of the infinite, then the quest is finite, but if you're an infinite seeker, then Om Namah Shivaya, you have to say that's the only option left. Because you keep on seeking the finite infinitely, that is what it means. And the without the teacher, the teacher has a very important place in this, uh, you know, study, and this is what we'll be seeing in the in the subsequent uh, sessions how that is there, you know. So, but for now we will see that you know Ashvalayana does something that you know that all the people on you know who who have these big millions of followers on Twitter do. If they do something, what you know, everybody it becomes a big trend. It starts to trend. That's why if Ashvalayana approaches the Guru, then what? Then we feel comfortable to approach the Guru. Because Ashvalayana is a role model, he's a sage. And so then, so this Ashvalayana, what does he do? You know, Bhagavantam, the Lord, Parameshtinam, you know, Parameshtinam means what? You know, Parameshti means the God of the God of the God of the God of the God, the great grand sire of all the devatas, Brahmaji. Brahmaji is the creator of everything, so he is the master of everything. So Ishvara, in the form of Brahmaji, you know, who has given rise to everything, all devatas are non separate from him anyway, but then he reigns over them. So this Lord Brahma, you know, what did, what did he do? Bhagavantam, Atha, you know, and then Ashvalaganaha, you know, what did, what did he do? Bhagavantam, Bhagavantam here means the one, you know, Pujaniyam, Pujavantam, the one who is worship, uh, worthy of worship, worshipful. And then what, you know, and then uh, the, the one who he approached, this Parameshti, uh, Lord Brahma, Parameshti means what, you know, Sarva Utkrishta Sthana Nivasam, the one who occupies the absolute, you know, there's no one above him. This Ishvara, there's no one above him, such a person he approached, and then what, you know, Parisametya, Parisametya means, you know, having, you know, having Upasametya, having approached. Upa near, Sametya going near. And you don't go near the Guru to just hang out and say, let's have coffee. No. The going to the teacher is for one purpose and one purpose alone for the sake of gaining this knowledge. No other purpose. Okay? So, and then Vidhivat Upasannaf Paprishtha. Vidhivat means, you know, Vidhivat means following all the rituals that are there, Samit Pani, etc. Taking some, you know, you, 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 you don't approach three kinds of people empty handed. And who is, this is all in the culture, you know. Riktapanir na pasyet, Rajanam Daivatam Gurum. Don't see three people empty handed. The king, even if you don't like the king. You know, somebody who's a ruler. When you go to see the ruler, you take a little gift. It doesn't have to be a huge thing, something. It's the heart that counts. It's the thought that counts. Rajanam, daivatam, when you go to a place of worship, you may take a fruit, you may take a flower, you go to the temple, don't go empty-handed. You take incense, you give something. Take some oil for the lamp, you know, anything. And then the third category is guru. Because all these, you know, the, uh, the, the, these are all, you know, service-oriented, uh, you know, entities. Raja is supposed to be a service-oriented entity. Bhagavan is there just to serve you. And then uh, that's why he's sitting in the temple. And then uh, Guru also is there only for service and uh, seva. And the, the whole life is given for service. And so you take something, you know. You take something and that is why Ashvalayana also, you know, so the word upasametya includes all this. The upasarga upa. Upa here means near. Sametya means, you know, vidhivat upasametya, you know, according to the, the, the tradition of the time. And so what did he take? Uh, what do you take for the Guru? If the Guru is a grihastha, then you take some 
you know sticks of wood you know that you pick up twigs you pick up from the floor of the forest you take that for because the grihastha guru has to do every day agni hotra you give it for their uh, rituals you give it you know and then what do you know then you know then uvacha uktavan you know asked and then there is one small word here before we find out what he asked let us go back to the first word here atha atha very interesting atha means you know there after nobody starts the you know nobody starts a text with there after there after means what after what what has come before we don't even know but suddenly you are saying there after very interesting this small word atha includes a huge list of things and then atha also is mangala suchaka it is instead of om or along with om omkarascha atha shabdascha omkarascha atha shabdascha dvavetau brahmana pura kantham bhitva vinir yatau tasman mangalikau ubhau very interesting apparently when lord brahma who is the teacher in this upanishad you know created so to speak projected this whole universe ishvara in the form of lord brahma projected this whole universe he kind of patted himself on the back and said not bad you know not bad old man you've done a great job here look at this and so he said two words of joy what were they om atha <laughs> om atha so then you know om and they spontaneously came out of this his throat his mouth they broke through his throat and came out a spontaneous utterances om and atha so omkara and the the, the uchcharana of omkara omkara is a sound symbol which means bhagavan because it has come from bhagavan it is bhagavan non separate from bhagavan and atha shabda atha means what this this what brahma ji said atha and then omkarascha atha shabdascha dvau etau these two brahmana pura pura means before after he made the creations long back brahmana from brahma ji you know kantham bhitva viniryatav it spontaneously broke through his vocal cords and they they became the first words of the which the universe heard nada brahma we say this is nada so the first sounds the original sound of the universe you know uttered by lord brahma ji of course they are mangala vachya and shubha auspicious sounds in the form of om and atha and so as a nod to the teacher as a salute to the teacher in this upanishad again we have this word atha because who is the teacher here lord brahma ji very nice beautiful touch here the a very subtle touch by the the, the upanishad and so uh, so he said om and atha tasmat mangalikau ubhau these two are seen as extremely auspicious so the first meaning of the word atha here is that the upanishad begins with a prayer for you know shubha shubha means the completion and why should the upanishad even pray for shubha you know shubha means what may all the people studying this upanishad gain this knowledge it is fantastic it is wonderful may all the the the, the people you know studying this upanishad gain this knowledge please let them gain this knowledge please let there be no pratibandhas pratibandhas means you know any kind of obstacles in gaining this knowledge let them gain this knowledge freely and fully you know this is what the whole thing is so beautiful and you know so that is the first meaning of the word atha the atha also has a grammatical meaning you know uh, atha means as i said there after thereafter means what before it it simply means before ashvalayana who you know is the author of these grihya sutras and all these things and uh, before ashvalayana approached the teacher 
you know this there he was doing several other things so he did all those things and then approached the teacher <laughs> you know we don't have a commentary for this upanishad by adi shankara but we have a nice commentary by swami shankarananda who is the teacher of swami vidyaranya who is the author of the panchadashi swami vidyaranya's teacher is called shankarananda and shankarananda writes a beautiful commentary a bhashya to this upanishad you know and very very nice here so he says you know she is uh, so the atha is uh, swami shankarananda the commentator of this upanishad you know the bhashyakara for this upanishad says sadhana chatushtaya sampatti anantaram so there is a time gap between some things he did before and then approaching the teacher what was he doing before he approached the teacher was he eating drinking busy being karta bhokta and crying about his fate no he was gaining the prerequisites for this knowledge he was gaining the prerequisites for this knowledge because he had already some idea what this knowledge entailed and he understood that there were many things that he had to gain and have to have a handle on before he could come to the teacher he had to prepare himself so the atha means those years days months perhaps lifetimes spent in self preparation you see yeah so the tapas that is involved that precedes the gnanam here is called atha <laughs> here thereafter after this austerities that's why i said that before the upanishads one studies aranyakas one studies and one performs various kinds of meditations upasanas to calm down the ahankara to gain emotional maturity to calm down the raga dveshas there are so many things but you don't pursue them with a vengeance you know it's otherwise it becomes an asurik tapas that's not the point like even ravana stood on one leg for 55 years the mahabharata says and then what he what he did after that we know i mean you know he terrorized his his own country and then he you know abducted sita even though he had another wife who was actually a kind of a doppelganger of sita we we hear so her her name was mandodari and she was a sita look alike there was only one difference between them you know the and the the difference was that the 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 pada the the sole of mother sita's foot had a kamala a kind of a what is that you know lotus uh, inscribed on it and mandodari had a crow that's the oh, that was the only difference there was a crow picture on her foot on the bottom of her foot and then uh, this one had a uh, padma a lotus lily whatever you want to call it so even though he had a wife who looked just like uh, like uh, sita you know he abducted sita all these horrible horrible things he did so such this kind of a killer tap- tapas is not needed that's not the point of it the tapas is not for the sake of you know gaining mastery of the universe and then world domination that's not the tapas that is still being stuck in the first portion of the veda for the slow graduation and transition into vedanta the tapas looks very different it is soft and the tapas doesn't uh, always take need not always take the form of sitting in uh, the shape of a pretzel with the hands in chin mudra that's not the necessarily the look of the tapas the tapas here is just leading your life and you know as a dharmic person tapas here is a daily sacrifice that one has to do in order to keep the peace in the household the daily kind of things one has to give up in order to raise a family if you have a child your life as you know it is gone you know in america they say 18 years gone in india with our problem is we don't know when to stop parenting we are parenting till they are 60 <laughs> you know and we are 90 this is what we do and so this is what you know this is tapas the tapas is basically you know learning when to let go learning how to interpret dharma in the every day this is the tapas tapas is gaining what is called viveka through all these 
day to day austerities cooking cleaning going for work you know letting go of whatever one wanted the most letting go let somebody have it let somebody win the argument let somebody take it and go it's okay if it is meant to, to come it will come you know it will come in some form with me it will come to me so let it go you know all this is tapas dealing with disappointment that is tapas the, 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 it doesn't always have to look you don't always have to study the aranyaka if you lead your life it is itself a tapas if you lead your life correctly as the first uh, portion of the veda tells you to that itself is the tapas and then what you know as a result the fruit of this tapa tapa means the heat heat here is the discomfort you know the discomfort you know tapas is you know, when you sit down for meditation when the sages sat down for meditation they did not have air conditioned caves you know <laughs> it used to just whatever wherever they sat it used to be whatever weather they had to you know they had to get adjusted to it and without uh, you know distraction they would learn to sit so anything that makes the mind calm down is tapas and the tapas for brahma vidya is what is called sadhana chatushtaya the four fold tapas here qualifications sha sadhana chatushtaya one thankfully we have you know already uh, learnt about mumukshutvam learning to be a seeker of freedom seeker of knowledge by understanding that everything that i have been doing right now is just a is wasted because if i don't have this knowledge i will never lose the sorrow i will always be unhappy this is the tapas this is what is called you know this is what is called mumukshutvam we have already seen that in some detail so i can go a little faster with the other things then we have you know the ability to distinguish between the finite and the infinite which brought ashvalayana to the feet of the teacher very important quality because if i don't have that ability to distinguish i'm always transferring the you know infinite on to the finite infinitely i'm always transferring it i'm always second questioning my second guessing myself i'm always you know transferring it so i'm trying to make the finite into infinite and hitting my head on the wall it's a frustrating process the finite will never become infinite because the infinite is not a product a finite is a product whatever is a product what will happen it will it will fall apart anything that comes together falls apart and so therefore what so therefore this ability to distinguish between the infinite and the finite and to focus to become abhimukha to focus to to shift my goal towards the infinite is called viveka nitya nitya vastu viveka between nitya and anitya anitya finite nitya infinite this you have to have otherwise you don't you don't really go to the teacher why would you go to the teacher if you didn't have this and then you know the ability to let go of the finite see first i may have viveka but then i may not have the strength to let go of the finite pursuits i have to drop the finite and that is called vairagya dropping the finite through having the objectivity the subjectivity leads to clinging subjectivity means a wrong understanding uh, of something which has an inflated value in my mind for example money you know people have too much thing over money they just sort of you know people just think oh money so much money this much money that much money but really speaking nobody really wants money why well, if you even if you ask the richest person on earth you know do you want money no i want what it can give me what can it give you a sense of security that's why it's called artha security this is what it is so there is a value added attitude towards the money and that is what i have to withdraw vairagya money or anything family it's inflated some kind of a feeling of codependency that is what you know i come out of that this is vairagya so we have seen three viveka vairagya mumukshutvam 
all that uparjanam cultivation of all this he was earning his viveka ashvalayana he was earning his vairagya he was earning his mumukshutvam he was you know before he approached the teacher he was preparing himself he was earning all the credits the prerequisites for this knowledge then finally the fourth one you know and that's why i saved it for the last you know because in vedanta we just say only four things you have to know and then the fourth thing becomes six things <laughs> <laughs> so the four things together you know the fourth thing which i'm going to talk about is called what you know shamari shatka a group of six the fourth thing is actually a group of six these are just common sense you know mental you know ways you know kind of orientations of looking at the world in certain ways having some you know some kind of a understanding you know this is what this is what the whole thing is and so uh, what what do we have here this is shama a resolved mind a mind that's not always rebelling and taking up cudgels and fighting with with itself some inner split fighting with others there is some uh, the mind which is not a kurukshetra or always having a battle all the time no conflict a resolved mind and a, and a kind of a you know shanta mind a peaceful mind and that is again cultivated through daily living through prayer through uh, the ability to let go it all this is connected and then dama the ability to not uh, you know react physically to things that you don't like bahyendriya nigraha dama antarendriya nigraha shamaha so this is you know uh, dama is what the you know dama means kind of an uh, you know with all the regard to the organs of action i have a say over the organs of action you feel like hitting somebody it doesn't mean that that gives you the uh, ability to just go and you know give, give somebody a slap you can have the feeling you breathe it out you convert it into shama and then you go on you may be angry with the person but you don't always act out not acting out is dhamma then uparati uparati is in letting go of the small stuff then letting go of the big stuff sometimes the small stuff becomes the big stuff one is always worried about something or the other letting go is uparati and then we have titiksha titiksha is sahanam sarva dukkhanam apratikara purvakam chinta vila parahitam satitiksha nigadyate titiksha means the ability to put up with discomfort physical and mental without either wailing and complaining about it or without inwardly imploding and dying out of worry titiksha and then we have shraddha shraddha i will save because that is one of the the teachings of of uh, lord brahma ji you know and he he talks about shraddha but briefly shraddha will take a big look at shraddha in the next class tomorrow but uh, you know uh, but briefly shraddha is trust pending understanding devotional trust pending understanding i have some trust so this is what is shraddha and then finally samadhanam focus these six things are you know since they are so connected these are all attitudes that i cultivate in order to be a compassionate non reactive person they are all clubbed together as the group of six six pack yeah six pack so we have viveka vairagya mumukshutvam and then we have this six pack so this is what is called together called sadhana chatushtaya sampatti hi a treasure in you know in the form of all this and so this atha means ashvalayana was going you know ashvalayana was busy collecting all these qualifications in order to gain this knowledge so parisametya you know shastriyena vidhina uh, you know swami shankarananda says according to all the customer customary ways of approaching the teacher doing namaskar asking with a place of samva you know from a standpoint of samvada respectfully asks him you know 
uvacha allo uvacha is you know passed perfect a long time ago to indicate that this happened this story took place a long time ago uvacha asked him uktavan what did he ask and then what did lord brahma ji say you know this this you know the, this will you know comprise the next lecture the subject matter of the next lecture so i'll say the closing prayer and like the previous class we will have some time for you know any questions that you may have okay om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaya purnameva avashishyate om shanti 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 hari om shri gurubhyo namaha hari om so like nitin said uh, you know there are two places where you can type one is the chat pod that is for you know greeting one another and uh, you know and if you want to say anything else but if you want to ask questions you can do it in this another q and a you know uh, you know uh, this thing a q and a pod okay yeah so, so does... we have one question already yeah yeah if you want to take it up sure yeah yeah yes. there was one from the morning we haven't addressed also i will i will uh, uh, take that up also so doesn't atha also mean now yeah now means after all these things have been done yeah that is the whole idea in uh, regular parlance sometimes it is used you know but it means technically it means thereafter and then karma is finite so how by doing karma can you gain infinite that's my question to you sudhakar yeah that is what i have been asking in the last two talks how meaning from a rhetorical sense you cannot gain the infinite by karma therefore it is by shravanam alone vedanta shravanam through listening to the teacher listening is not an action even though you may bring yourself to a place of listening but you know you cannot uh, you, you know you don't really will to listen listening happens it knocks off the notion one is incomplete one is a desiring person so you cannot gain the infinite uh, through karma you are absolutely correct that is what we have been talking about okay yeah then can you explain again the chatu yeah chatushtaya sadhana chatushtaya sadhana means these are the you know qualifications means so first one viveka the ability to distinguish between the finite and the infinite and the courage to choose the uh, the, uh, the the infinite and drop the finite uh, vairagya then we saw the six pack samadama uparati titiksha shraddha samadhanam all these attitudes to being a student an ideal student and then finally mumukshutvam the uh, uh, understanding you know what sudhakar said in the earlier question karma is finite and by doing karma i'm not going to get more gain moksha moksha is an as though gain and i'm just going to drop the ignorance through Uh, uh, the uh, through knowledge because if ignorance is the problem the antidote is only knowledge so that is what the whole thing then one more question please give the list of shat sampatti uh, yeah shama resolved mind dama you know a, a resolved organs of action where you have a say over uh, organs of action uparati uparati means uh, this uh, the, the ability to let go and not obsess about things in life and then shraddha devotional trust reverential the cultivation of reverential trust uh, you know and then uh, shraddha titiksha titiksha means the ability to put up with all kinds of discomfort and then samadhanam samadhanam single minded focus i don't look here or there i am completely absorbed in this you know in this pursuit i don't get distracted okay yeah then it seems to me that most of us do not question about the content of the teacher or the teacher of the upanishads it is more about the inability to relinquish or detach from the samsari routine or demands i guess one has to graduate to that at a level of some point clarifications comments yes you are absolutely right well you know 
you you may naturally have shraddha but many people do question many people do question the knowledge many people do question that the need for the teacher all these things so you know we, we most we cannot say most many people may not question many people question all kinds of people make up this world and then uh, uh, the inability to relinquish uh, to to let go of this routine yes that is very uh, you know uh that is a that, that is an important uh, uh, that's an important thing to uh, uh, see that uh, you know somehow even though in the classroom i find that people are very very clear how this uh, you know how the why this knowledge is important how this functions etc but then what happens is that they go home after they go home or after they log off then suddenly those doubts come back and there is not there is not enough space one is back in the in the vat of samsara that's why we need to do shravanam not once a year but regularly regular shravanam is the way to go this is what gives the this is what gives the ability this is what gives the little space and you know this is what gives the ability to you know gain that inner space between you and the problems or whatever you called it you know the samsara samsari routine etc okay I think uh, the, that's all. Uh, yeah, one one from questions. the morning. One from the morning was there, which we did not address, and that was a an interesting mm -hmm. and an important question. If I may just take that up, so in the morning somebody yeah. asked. Yeah, in, in the morning somebody asked. You know, is it if I have the desire for this knowledge, is it okay to attend every webinar and every seminar on the Upanishads and on related topics? this is a very wonderful question an important question why not you know you have to start somewhere and then you will see as as you start doing that as you start attending you know in the beginning one is like a cow anyway let uh, you know put in the pasture and then you just the cow indiscriminately eats everything that is green you know and then uh, uh, so like this the, uh, the 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 new student of vedanta is likened to the cow who eats everything in the in the pasture so this is something which is uh, so you know uh, we have to understand this and uh, in the beginning yes open yourself up to whatever is coming and then what happens as a in the uh, when you start to listen you will find you know just like you have ishta devata you you may resonate a little more with a certain kind of teaching whether it's a certain parampara or a certain person perhaps and that's allowed in the tradition that's okay that's totally allowed and that's totally encouraged also that's why the teachers come in all form with beards without beard in Body. Sometimes you know, uh, so, 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 so people have father issues. That it is easier to teach, uh, learn from a uh, teacher who is in a female body. Sometimes they have mother issues. You know, it's easier to approach a, a person in a male body. And sometimes they have what? You know, sometimes people have father issues, mother issues, both at the same time. Where do you go then? And then you go Hayagrivam Upasmahe. Hayagriva was also a teacher of Brahma Vidya. Face of a horse. You have all these things in the Puranas. even in the madhu vidya you know says dadichi you know had had a face of a horse and then after that he taught so the, all this is not a small thing this is all very beautiful psychology in the upanishads and so you know you you will find that you resonate to one particular parampara and that style of teaching or and you may resonate with one particular person and that's okay and then you can stop listening to everything and everybody once the the the, the search becomes very uh, fine tuned and the search becomes very urgent then uh, you can do that it will happen on its own okay but till then no harm in listening and then deciding for yourself uh i think uh, with this we come to a conclusion of another session of uh, weekend with wisdom thank you again swamini ji for a very insightful session on uh, vedanta 
and uh, viewers do not forget to uh, attend tomorrow morning session at 6:30 am uh, thank you everyone shri guru bhyo namaha uh, thank you nitin thank you advaita academy people thank you all for coming om namah shivaya